We're going to go on to our third and final segment of the show in just a minute, but we have one more video from the Tesla showroom. In fact, this is a road test of the Tesla Roadster with me behind the wheel. Let's go ahead and roll that tape. After Camille demonstrated how the car is plugged in, we were ready for a test drive. And so now we're driving the Tesla Roadster and we're learning a little bit about its characteristics. We're now going down Sand Hill Road heading toward 280. I noticed the suspension seems a little bit tight. We went over some bumps in the pavement and we definitely did feel them. But remember, this is a sports car. Oh, and here's the freeway coming up. Nice acceleration, gets up to freeway speed real quick. La 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 in my merry Tesla Roadster. So the handling is very similar to a regular gasoline car. The controls are very similar. It's easy to drive. Okay, so I enjoyed that. That was an enjoyable ride. I didn't take it very far. I didn't take it very fast, but I could see I could get the hang of that. But there's a number of other things going on with the technology. I've heard about this battery swapping technology where instead of waiting for a charge, you drive your car into a service station and they remove your battery and put another battery in its place that's fully charged. Uh, this model I drove does not have that. Does the next version, the sedan, uh, have that? So uh, the, the Model S and future models will look at uh, quick swap capability. That's something that we are looking into and that we have initiatives to, that are behind that. Okay. Now, I understand that the battery would have to be configured differently, and since it's a lot of individual cells, you could pretty much configure it the way you want. My understanding was that the battery would be largely flat and under the undercarriage of the car, so you'd remove it from the bottom instead of pull it out. Correct. So is yeah. that a fairly accurate thing? And yeah, I mean, the, uh, the way the pack's designed, and, and probably Ollie can touch base on it, allows us a lot of flexibility in, in how we package it. Right. And would this be self-service? Could I drive in and press a button and it's automatically switched, or do I need a, a team of big, burly guys to... Uh... It, it'll be, it'll be uh, at, at some point or uh, at some level automated. Uh, that, mm -hmm. At what level is still to, to be determined? What would you say is the biggest problem that Tesla has to overcome in order to really make it in the marketplace, your biggest roadblock? Oh, that's a good question. But I don't think we're actually running into roadblocks right now. Um, if you look at where Tesla was four or five years ago, and then you look at all the other you know, uh, OEMs that are starting to get into this business, um, the, the, the roadblock is kind of getting over this mindset that electric vehicles are sort of uh, glorified golf carts. They're not. They're a vehicle that you can drive, uh, you can put the family in, you can go to uh, your local uh, uh, food co-op, fill up the back end, put a TV in, a surfboard, a mountain bike, and use it in everyday use. Um, and so uh, what we've done is taken this technology, proven the high performance. Now we can plug those into a variety of different solutions for people. And, you know, we've got a high-performance car, but we're building a sedan. And, you know, we have partnerships of other types of vehicles that people can use. I think, I think the biggest roadblock would be actually getting the customer or the potential customer in a car and driving it. Uh, once, once that happens, you know, 99% of the time they're sold. Um, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not something that takes much selling or convincing. Um, it's, it's a really awesome experience to drive an electric car. Now, will people drive this car because it's cool or... I mean, like a lot of people just consider a car to be a utilitarian device to get them from one place to the other. Is there, is there an image, like, is Tesla positioning itself in the image market somehow like, you're cool if you have this car? I don't, I don't think we have a, a, a position like that at all. I mean, whether, whether you're looking at this to be a, a totally utilitarian uh, tool it, or you're looking at it to be an image uh, vehicle, it, it's, it's kind of doing both at the same time because it is such an efficient machine and it works so well that you could you could just use it as a a, a means from point A to point B and and you know be efficient be safe uh, be reliable 
uh, and at the same time, you know, whether you want to or not, you can you can use it as a, a tool for an image. You know, if you want to be the one that pulls up with a shiny car at the valet. It's, now, I understand you've got some pretty big name supporters, uh, Toyota, for example. You're partnering with them in their former Numi plant. Uh, are there any other signs of confidence, you know, from big companies? Well, we have we have the uh, the agreement with Daimler also to supply uh, battery technology for a couple of their vehicles. Um, we have the... the uh, so you might be licensing your technology to other car companies as well? Uh, if the opportunity, uh, uh, if, if both, both parties agree to the opportunity, yeah. yeah. I think Panasonic has invested something in Tesla, hasn't it? Yeah. Panasonic's made a, uh, a sizable investment in... <clears throat> You know, not only a monetary investment, but uh, we're making kind of a, a more of a partnership in technology, um, and uh, and you know it, it's it's proving to be a a great asset for both companies. Okay, I'm getting the signal that we're just about out of time, so we're going to have to wrap pretty soon. Uh, I'd like to thank my two very interesting guests, Ali Javadan and Greg Zangi from Tesla Motors. We learned a lot about electric cars today. Uh, it looks like with the cost and difficulties of getting gasoline. Uh, electric cars uh, certainly have a lot of potential for the future and uh, I look forward to driving another one in the not too distant future, hopefully. Okay, we are going to wrap. Uh, this is Marty Wasserman. Be sure to visit our website at www.futuretalk.net. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time.